Hello and welcome back to the 2023 Talk Toys wrap up. So, uh, if you've missed part one, well, yeah, I'd go and watch that. Oh, you don't have to actually. You can just start with part two. What is wrong with you? Um, or like, just be chaotic, right? Watch part two and then part one from the 2022 wrap up, and then part three from the 2021 wrap up. And then maybe get... throw in the 2025 one if you're watching in 2026. Ooh, you know, there's actually yeah. a joke even last year that says to go back forward to the 2020 yeah. one. It's just running the theme. Uh, it is a comedy. We're creatures of, 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 of habit, you know? Well, hey, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, and talking about not being broke, here's anime. Uh, right, so my nomination for this year of best anime and as you can probably tell if you're watching this this is definitely not an anime that came out this year uh because my nomination is bubblegum crisis uh so as you can probably tell from the artwork it is a very 80s anime uh the brief synopsis is it's a uh, it's about a group of four girls who by day have regular jobs but by night fight crime in a futuristic kind of cyberpunk Tokyo. Uh, um, yeah. They are a group called the Night Sabers, uh, and three of them have kind of cybernetic armor, a little bit like Iron Man armor, but not quite. Um, and then the, I played with Iron Mouse armor for a second. I got very confused. <laughs> Iron Man armor. Okay, that makes uh, yes. sense. Uh, so yeah, it's it is. Very, uh, it is very 80s tastic. So, one of the other kind of things that these girls do is they are all in a band together, and <laughs> they me so the it's a great vehicle for some banging 80s Japanese pop as well. Um, so the series that I specifically watched is Original Bubblegum Crisis, which isn't strictly a series as it's more a collection of 10 OVAs but a lot of the OVAs are half an hour long or slightly less um, so. canonically does it come before or after Crisis Core? Uh, is, is that fair in, 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 in this anime? Uh, sadly it has no uh, ties to that although and uh, do they eat bubblegum? Uh no the so the bubble no. gum uh is does anyone no... eat bubblegum? Like, do you eat bubblegum Dan? please don't tell me you eat bubblegum Oh, you're not meant to. Bubblegum is more... a bubblegum tree grow inside of you. <laughs> it's more reference to, I think, from what I read, it's more reference to bubblegum pop, as in it's sort of it's very upbeat '80s Japanese pop. Nice. Uh, there's usually a song per episode, uh, and thankfully, the DVD set that I uh, bought, the fourth disc, comes with two, like uh, you know, recorded live performances, uh, and they are also incredible lots of puffy hair and strange suit jacket kind of things going on with the uh singers but yeah honestly bubblegum crisis if i had to summarize it as anything is is it's the 80s anime that everyone online says wishes they exist like you'll see someone make like a piece of artwork or they'll do like an animation of you know, someone in a cool robot suit driving a bike at night with shades on and there's neon everywhere and it's like, man, I wish this was a series. It is. It's called Bubblegum Crisis. It sounds like Japanese gem and the holograms. A, a I, little bit. close on that one? Yes. Yeah, it's it's not far off. So I think this did precede it. So I don't know if gem is maybe sort of like Ooh. inspired by it. Yeah, maybe. Um, so it does as well have a bit of a messy kind of web in that... Bubblegum Crisis is the first technically series, but then there's like two or three other anime that kind of tie in, but only the second series has a continuity to this one, and none mm, of them are quite as good. Um, but yeah, Bubblegum Crisis, it's it's quite a cult classic uh, at this point. It is, uh, it's not on many streaming places. I want to say, I think it's like Tubi or something, you can watch it for free with ads or something. Did you have Blu-ray? Did you have the Blu-ray copy or DVD? Oh, uh, DVD. I bought. So I bought the DVD from a charity auction online, uh, and um, so it's it's a, it's a proper old DVD nice. as well. Can I borrow it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly. It's uh, it. Yeah, uh, it is a very good series. Uh, I I recommend you. if 
you're in the mood for 80s anime uh you know it's not gonna you know it's it's not got the uh, like visual fidelity of say demon slayer or something it is you know it is somewhat mm. dated but yeah i think it's just it's the perfect 80s anime uh nice you know right let's move on to the next nomination and that is dan's and i unintentionally made a reference that would uh segue into this dan what is your nomination it's demon slayer what can i say specifically Um, to the swordsmith village so it's the the um that uh arc of the anime so far and um yeah i mean i you know i i i I, th- I, I think that you know, I, I, it's it's Demon Slayer. It's mm. Demon Slayer. I'm st- really stammering, but it's, it's Demon Slayer. <laughs> the visuals. I'm oh, sorry. The visuals are good. The action is good. The the drama. I I love it. I I you know. I feel like a teenager watching it, and that's what I like about it. You know, it takes me. I I, I switch off and just go full teenager mode and. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of ants, there's a lot of crying in it, and there's a lot of edgy stuff in it, but I don't care. It's 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 good. And, it is, I uh, guess, a difficult choice to talk about because it's like season three of an ongoing series, so it's But I think hard the one thing I anything. Yeah, the one thing I will say is I they've they have actually confirmed it will finish. Hmm. Well the, the will manga finish. finished yeah. a few years ago. Everything finishes in time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not like One Piece where it's just, you know... Well, although... Uh, no disrespect to... What, well, One Piece is in its final arc, so it is sort of... It is, okay. Yeah, the, uh, an order's confirmed an ending, so... I mean, obviously, then they've released two pieces, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> b- bizarrely, if we can go off on a tangent for a second, Netflix has recently announced an anime called The One Piece. Mm, I did see it. Which is... <laughs> so... People originally thought it was a remake anime of One Piece, which is like, no, don't... What, what's what's wrong with you? Why would you do that? But apparently is... It's an anime re-adaptation, but apparently... I I wouldn't be surprised if it's akin to the Scott Pilgrim thing that Tom was talking about mm. earlier, that whilst it's sort of that, maybe it's going to go it's off... It's Final and... Fantasy VII remake, yeah. Yeah, mm. it's going to kind of maybe start and then be like, whoa, 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 let's go. So... That could be interesting. Anyway, sorry, that's that's a massive tangent. Sorry, Dan. But I know you've um, you've started watching yes, Demon Slayer I've, this year. So. I've seen season one and Mugen Train. I'm kind of, I'm intentionally not binging it because I don't want to sort of, you know, take two weeks to watch all of Demon Slayer and then be like, cool, that uh, it, it's over now. I'm gonna have to wait several years yeah. and it all you know melds in your mind into one big mush. So I'd rather, you know, I'm going to leave it breathe and do a season every, you know, couple months or something. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I finished watching the season and I'm um, I'm curious where, 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 you know, where it goes next. I, I, you know, I, you know, I obviously I think if you watch it, you know, you have these villains, but there's always another side to them that, you know, you can see why they went down that road. And then you got the the... One of the main villains. I can't remember what his name is, but he basically looks like Michael Jackson. Eh? Oh, I, I can't, can't take rem- the guy. I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Muzan. You know. Muzan. Muzan, yes. I can't and remember his last name. I was your favourite anime of the year. You can't even remember what the main villain's name is? Hmm. No, I, you know. No, no, no. I, I am I am one of those people who are like, all right, it's the... It's, it's, oh, you know, it's I can't sword even guy. Remember. Uh, green, green and black checkered sword guy, and the 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 black haired girl with the the pink dress. Yes. Them, them ones. But honestly, I like you. If you watch, like, so Muzan, who is the villain? If you if you look at Muzan, it's definitely Michael Jackson. Like, yeah. it's 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 um, smooth criminal hmm. vibes. You know, He's got a white and, suit, very pale skin. He is a demon. Oh, no. No, no, no! It's actually he's got a, actually a black suit in the anime, but yeah, yeah. but yes. Do you um, have a white suit in this? Time? I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. I don't know. I don't know. But but it doesn't matter but, if it's black or white. Exactly, it doesn't. Uh, uh, uh. Right. But yeah, um, I I don't know. I, I I just I just really like the anime, and I'm um, I'm I'm loving it. And hmm. um, yeah, what can I say? Um, 
All for all for Demon Slayer. I'm looking forward to watching more. Uh, mm. In a short... I think they've announced um, another. Cin- I I what yeah, I do like I do movie. like the cinema. The yeah, go into the cinema and watching the 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 newest episode uh, as well as the the last. Yeah, episode, it, you it's know. the kind of bridge between the last series and the next series. It's uh, and it's yeah, you would, you'd think it's odd, but. I quite like going to them. It's like a, you know, it's it's quite a good vibe. And uh, you know, I went on my own uh, this year. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, the, I think, you, uh, the the yeah. classic anime fan experience. <laughs> anime, anime really pops in the cinema. I think like mm. it's it works well on the big screen. Um, yeah, I've I've seen well when you're alone. Yeah. I've seen all of the Dragon Ball <laughs> Super era hey. um, movies, and yeah, they work really well. Hey, I think what I think going to the cinema on your own is a fine thing, you know. And I uh, went on to the cinema on my own one time in my life, and it was to see the like fourth Pirates of the Caribbean, and it put me off for life. Wow! <laughs> oh, <dr-> <laughs> I did it when I worked in the cinema a lot. I I went. Oh, I, does, that doesn't count. Does that count? I'm the team. That to be there. doesn't. You're paid to be there. <laughs> no, on my off time. Come on now, guys. Oh, okay. Oh, right, well, you're off time. On the topic of cinema, Tim, would you like to introduce your nomination? I don't think we'll be here long. <laughs> no, I don't want to introduce my fucking nomination, because Tom's already talked about it for half an hour. Uh, uh, so, Tom, do you want to introduce any... Susan May? Uh, so it's it's Susan May. <laughs> I haven't feeling. watched any series this year, so I thought I'd be really clever and say, "Well, we saw this anime movie this year called Susan May, and I thought it was really cool because it had a chair with three legs." But now I don't get to talk about it because Tom's already talked about it. So Is the... I thought it was really fun and really cute, and I liked all the things that Tom said about it and the fact that it reminded me of Into the Wild. And yeah, I'm just going, and, and, and yeah, it was very, it was very, it was very nice. I enjoyed. Yeah. Actually, oh my god, this wholesome. this is weirdly prescient. I just realised that I said that anecdote earlier, but it's one of the only films I've seen twice, and now I'm experiencing talking about it twice. <laughs> oh god, it's following me. Uh, right, let's end on Tom's one. Now, Tom, I couldn't find an accurate poster for the anime, oh, but I've got... Oh god, is it 18 plus? But I've got the manga cover instead, which is obviously what the anime is based on. Anyway, would you like to introduce your series? Yeah, so I had a tough one, but in the end, I went for the spin-off to Konosuba, which is Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world. Also, just to answer Tim's question, don't worry, Tim, she's not 18+, plus. it's Megumin. Uh, Tom. <laughs> Tom, continue. Um, so, yeah, this, uh, this series is a direct prequel uh, to the Konosuba series, which I... I think I started watching last year, uh, the original Konosuba, um, which is one of my favourite series. Is. And I don't like Isekais, but Konosuba is kind of the exception. because Everything's an Isekai if you look hard enough, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess. But um, it's, um, like I said, it's a prequel. It follows Megamin, who is probably the fan favourite character from Konosuba. Um, so, essentially, it talks about her going through, like, a magic school. Um, and she goes to, like, this academy and learns all the magic. And it goes into a backstory about why she loves explosion magic. So, the kind of joke in the series is she is min-maxed her character. And she's put all her points into explosion magic and it kind of goes into why she does this and it has all like the comedy and higher jinx of Konosuba which I like it's weirdly it starts off weirdly wholesome though at the beginning and then it kind of degenerates into Konosuba as it goes along mm-hmm. so <laughs> but I, I really like it. I really like it. It also it also talks about another character called Yun Yun as well. And she's like a side character in the main series, but she's like Megamin's rival and it goes into why are their rivals. Um ah. and another really cool thing about the series and one of my favourite parts of it 
there was a whole there was a whole like few episodes of it where they go to that village where the Axis Church has taken over. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm but in that. in the prequel, it's they're not there and they're kind of like a fringe sect. Ah. But it goes into how they came into dominance there and it was really that was really funny because they are absolute degenerates. So yeah, I really liked it and the series ends at the exact moment Konosuba begins. Or when they meet Megamin in the original Konosuba series. So it's there's not gonna be another sequel to the to this like spin off, mm. I assume, unless they're gonna do something else later on. Uh but it works really well, and I kind of hope they do it for the other characters as well. Uh, like, if they did a series for Darkness, that would be, that would be really cool. Darkness is um, cool. Or Wiz. She's got quite a backstory. They could, they could do one for Wiz. They could, they could even do one for Aqua, I imagine. Hmm. I don't know how that would work, but um, Konosuba's going strength to strength, and I think there's going to be another series. Yeah, sure. season three, I think, is out next year, I want to say... Yeah, so they've announced another series. Uh, if they bring out another movie this time, I'm definitely going to the mm. cinema to watch it, because the last mm. one came to cinemas. It did. So, yeah, I think it's quite limited release around here, sadly. But Yeah, but it's one of the best comedy animes out there. Uh, highly suggest, and I, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah. Mm. Nice. Right, well, if the movie does come out... Uh, to cinemas we'll have to book a ticket and on the topic of books because that was a strained metaphor it's on to the best books slash audiobooks slash podcasts that we've read in 2023 so metaphor gonna... where was the metaphor no the segue sorry not the uh yeah. so i'm gonna go into my nomination which is kind of linked to the last segment my nomination for best thing i read this year was the Full Metal Alchemist manga. Uh, so oh. I have been a big fan of Full Metal Alchemist since the uh, 2003 series, the the anime, uh, and Brotherhood that came out once, say 2007 or something like that. So I've seen both. I've seen Conqueror of Shambhala. I watched the first live-action movie. I'm, 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 a, I'm a big fan of Full Metal Alchemist. And uh, this year... I had I, I picked up some of the uh, manga that I'd bought years ago and never got around to read in. I thought, oh, I'll I'll read a couple of volumes and then like pick them up if I see them for cheap. And then kind of nine volumes in, I was like, I need to I need to buy all of these. I need to read this again. Uh because honestly, despite the fact I basically knew exactly what was gonna happen, I I'm gonna say it, I don't know if this is a controversial opinion within the community but uh i think the manga the full metal alchemist manga is the best way to experience this story i think the anime does it you know really well brotherhoods did it even better but i think there's just something about the manga you can really i don't know you can really feel arakawa's mm. passion put into it um i think it's helped as well because whilst it is sort of a shonen series it's not that's not really necessarily its main focus. It deals with a lot of concepts of like death, life, life after death, sort of mm. what would happen if alchemy was real, know. things like that. Well, I kind of get that because I've been reading uh, the Berserk mangas and uh, uh, yeah, there's something about like, you know, the obviously the, the anime is incredible, but there's something about the, the manga of the source material is always, like, you know, the, th the go-to. I know, think this. it helps as well in that the pacing of a manga is always your own pacing. Yes. Where, so, like, you can, you can appreciate little things or, like, I mean, as doubtlessly loads of other manga series do as well, but in Full Metal Alchemist there'll be small throwbacks or sort of like a poignant scene in a location that something happened earlier or you know you see later on and whereas in the anime sometimes it can be like oh that that was like a 10 second scene if you don't remember it tough whereas it, it's nice you know having a manga just sort of take in everything yeah. you know go your own pace and uh yeah i i i think if you've ever been curious about getting into manga, I think Full Metal Alchemist is a really good start. It's 
fairly light-hearted at the start at least it does get you know a lot more serious yeah. later on and stuff but um of course yeah I, <laughs> the exception but, to the rule that the source material is always better is a muppet christmas carol that's much better than charles dickens ever wrote <laughs> that actually true. actually that is true that yeah is i'm not being true. funny i'm not being ironic that's that's just no it is true. it is i i could i could i could talk a whole hour of the Christmas Carol Muppets version. Well, but, sadly, uh, nobody well, nominated that. So you, you no. are going to do it, Dan, but <laughs> it'll be on another I, video. I actually watched the uh, Christmas Eve. Same. <laughs> Watch it him did, did not die. Well. Can confirm. He did not yeah. die. Uh, right. Um, well, it's over to Dan's nomination for Best Book. Uh, Dan, would you oh. like to introduce your nomination? Okay, so thank you. Uh, so mine is not actually a manga it is uh is a book and it is by uh uh it's uh comic mccarthy the the late comic mccarthy who died this year sadly is um his is one of his last novels uh the passenger and the and the the novel that came after with it stella maris it's kind of they're kind of both the you know, companion novels really but um yeah, I mean, if if you know Cormac McCarthy, his previous stuff is, uh, you know, quite bleak. You know, he did No Country for Old Men, did The Road, did Blood Meridian, you know, all these um, classics that are dark, but they're, they're all beautiful as well. Like, mm. his writing is really beautiful, right? And when I... Um, and basically, you know, I've been meaning to pick this up, but I guess when I... When I when he when I heard that he died, it kind of like, oh well, you know, if I was like, right, well, I better pick this up, you know, um, and um, yeah, I it was, you know, I, I won't go into too much, obviously, if you want to read it yourself, uh, go check it out, but um, if you're expecting a you know kind of action drama and violence that that he's known for, um, you're not going to find it here. It's actually more of a slow paced drama. But um, you know, and it's just interesting. You know, it's it's you know, it's um, totally different from what he does. And he goes into you know, physics and maths and and you know, it's down in the south of you know, you know, Mississippi area. And um, but I think what makes um, McCarthy really good is you know, he like he he, he crafts like really beautiful sentences and it's like it's you know sometimes when you read and stuff i i i i generally read some stuff over just just because it was beautiful to read you know and it was uh incredible and and uh it, it was such a yeah it was a ride it was <laughs> i felt like i was the passenger in in the sense that of the story and it was i was in for the ride and um you know kudos to the guy it was like a war a swan song generally so um if you like if you like his stuff i i highly recommend it reading it so um and yeah uh red i know you haven't read it but i know you've read um yeah i've i was gonna say i've, I've not read uh that. I, i've only read two of his things the road and blood meridian but they are both, yes as you say it's they're beautiful but not in the traditional sense they they are dark bleak very very gritty but i don't know it's he i think he's a poetic pessimist everything is always the worst but it's always beautifully the worst it's sort of he, he i don't know he's, he's got a unique way or oh, had i suppose he is dead it's so. like yeah i think the only thing i can find right is like throughout the there are throughout the bleak mo bleak parts there's like fleeting moments of like peace and calm, and mm. you know he. Which is like, quite I, reflective of real life, I suppose. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. He he's definitely he's such a unique author. It's 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 almost impossible to compare him. Really, you know. Yeah. Something. It's you you could try all day, and I think you'd come up quite short because you know he's such a unique was well, such a unique but man. What I liked about this one, so. I would say the characters in the story are they the I I know it's a bit cringy to say but you generally feel like you're in a room with like of of actual people like he he writes in such a way that you you feel like these are actual people and that's a testament to his like craft and um 
yeah, I, you know, I loved it, and and sad to see him go. I mean, he was, you know, he was ninety ninety odd. So, but you know, hmm. I mean, um, yeah. So, so if you like his stuff, definitely you don't want to miss this miss uh, this one. Uh, and uh, you miss the book. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> Is you it don't want to miss the book. <laughs> It's it's only it's only limited, yeah, like... uh, you know. So you better you better act on it quick, because look, I'll tell yeah. you one thing. As an avid reader, sometimes I'll be like, "Damn, I wish I had I wish I had the ability to read <laughs> Dracula." But I mean, that that was that was like over a hundred years ago now. I'll never get my hands on one. Uh, I've missed out oh. on the Bible. Shit. It's okay. Well, yep. over to something that technically, <laughs> if we ever did suffer a massive EMP attack and all servers were compromised would be impossible to listen to. And that is a podcast that Tim has nominated. Tim? Oh, okay. So my, my New Year's resolution this year was to read more, which technically I have read more. But the things that I've read have been VAT case law, <laughs> psychology papers, and teach yourself Welsh. So I didn't really want to talk about any of those three things because they're very <laughs> fucking boring. So no, instead no. How's the Welsh things, going? Um, well ish i've uh, it's, yeah it's going well i don't want to dive too much into it but okay. um yeah i i'm enjoying learning welsh it is it's retreading a lot of things that uh that i, that I knew yeah. before but instead of talking about any of those things i'm going to talk about a podcast i listened to this year which is something rhymes with purple which is with giles brandreth and my absolute goddess Susie dent and it's a podcast where they talk about basically the etymology of words, which oh, I find nice. very, very interesting. It is partially inspired by a book that uh, that our own Daniel lent me this year, which is oh. the um, book where she goes each day of the year, she goes through a different word and gives us the etymology of the word. And I thought that was very, very interesting. And I have been reading that as well. Um, but it's I'm good inspired fun. by it's... that. It's... Yeah, I find it fascinating. I really do. And the amount of like English words that actually have Welsh roots is has is been something that I have found hmm. really. I don't know. Inspiring, like penguin, because penguin, interestingly, came from pain. Obviously, means head, hmm. and gwyn means white. So it goes back to that. But there used to be a different bird that had that name uh, that used to be around the coasts of Wales. But that bird, I think, died out. I think that bird went extinct. And it kind of got taken over to mean penguin instead, which is very interesting. But yeah, so th this one, I think it's one of those ones you could listen to to fall asleep. Because it's interesting. It's interesting enough to like keep listening to it. But also, it kind of lulls you off as well. Because the voices of the, the people involved, I don't know if you, either of you, either of you, any of you know um, Charles Brandreth. Yeah. Um, his He's voice like is very, very, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 and, very, very um, QI based, and, and what he he's saying, like, yeah, is very interesting. But he has such like a soothing voice that it is. He like, has a radio oh, voice. This, yeah, this he, is a podcast voice to give uh, a twenty twenty three tune yeah, to it. Yeah, he always has a story or anecdote mm. about something. Like you could talk about, um, I know Greg's pasties, and then he'll go off on the tangent of. Of what happened when he was in Guatemala or something like that. Yes, <laughs> you know, he very is, that. and it's interesting. And it, yeah, very interesting, and it plays off quite well, I think, with um, the glorious Susie Dent, who will always have something interesting to say, but is also kind of quiet in her own way. Do you know and what? I Charles can fucking talk for for hours. I love Susie Dent. There's something about Susie I am Dent. I'm obsessed with Susie Dent. I think she's one of my favorite people in the universe. I don't know what it is. It's just. I think I think I think it's just the vast knowledge of like she's like a living dictionary, and then yeah. she's like, oh it's... yes, well and, the vast she's... knowledge. Um, I don't know if uh, following her on Twitter, if you any people still use Twitter, is a must do because she'll tweet out something like word of the day, and it will be very like, um, very like blatantly to do with something that's happened recently in politics, but not overtly so. And it'll be like, oh, word of the day is like, blumber blue blue, and it's a person who fucking lies all the time, and it will be something somebody has recently yeah. done about a massive lie, and it is very interesting. Um, so highly recommend that. But it's also, I think, the fact that she was in Dictionary Corner 
on Countdown ah. for like yeah. um, our childhood. Uh, I think it resonates with that as well, that she's kind of a familiar face and, in a way, but she's always very kind of like quiet and kind of chimes in when she needs to. And also, um, 8 out of 10 cats does mm. Countdown. And she, I love that version. I love absolutely. that version. And she's I love that, that you, they kept her for the 8 out of 10 cats does Countdown, because yeah. obviously she's like genuinely just very knowledgeable and doesn't have like, she's not like into comedy or whatever, but they just kept her for that and the, the juxtaposition is wonderful. So yeah, yes. absolutely love her. Nice. Well, I, I may give that a listen. That sounds really interesting, actually. Uh, right. On to the last nomination, Tom. Would you like to introduce your nomination? So I've been kind of basic, I guess. I the thing is, I don't <laughs> really read many books. I'm not one for reading books. Since the accident, I'm more ugh, since the accident. Uh... Right, if it, if it helps, I recognise this, Tom. I've been watching a lot of these videos too. Videos, yes. videos. So, well, wow. video podcast, I listened a lot to the podcast version on Spotify. Oh, is there a podcast version? Right, okay. Then. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So, I li- the thing is, I listen to these as opposed to watch them. Got you. Um, I guess there could be a bit of a visual component. But anyway, my, my choice is it's a true crime kind of thing by the name of Explore With Us. So, okay. it's... I've been into these for a while now, but I've really jumped into them more this year. So, they're kind of, for the most part, they're videos on, like, when the police interview people after a crime has been committed. And it goes into, like, the cures that they notice in, like, the interview room and stuff, like, how their hands might be placed a certain way or oh. their palms open and stuff like that. Or they talk about the tone and if they're hired in Knees stuff. Knees weak. Kind of like yeah. Mindhunter, but in real life, basically. <laughs> well, yeah, it's real real cases. I find with the Explore With Us ca- um, channel, they tend to get a lot of things for the first time. So yes. they get stuff exclusively. They I... say, like, at the beginning of every video, they're like, Say this this video has been analysed by a criminal psychologist. Yeah, so I, I think attorneys. they've got yeah. kind of a business model in that I think they sometimes will pay courts or police sort of like um, places sort of like to release footage because be, oh well or they'll okay. pay for the petition to do so because I think right oh you know all, all police precincts and stuff probably have thousands mm. of hours of footage so I think yeah. they'll be like hey. You know, we want these specific they, ones. They're good as well. They don't just get the interviews. They'll get the, obviously, it's very America-based. Hmm. Um, I think, essentially, this style of video started with a channel called Jim Can't Swim, GCS hmm. Criminal Psychology. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, like, the beginning of this, and that was a few years ago. He's kind of dropped off now. He doesn't make so many videos, but I think this channel is probably the epicenter of them now. And they're the one that kind of covers it most. But yeah, they get like the 911 calls. They get the footage from the police cameras as they enter houses and stuff. So they get all this piece together as well as like some of the, obviously it's in America, a lot of court proceedings are filmed. So they get all that in there. And it's just fascinating. It's great to listen to while you're in work and stuff. Um, I do work I'm... when I'm in work. Says the guy yeah. who... Says the <laughs> guy Fiat who was rhythm. on a Fiat River. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I... lying, Brian. Don't listen to him. I... I... <laughs> also, thank... thanks for the like on this video as well, Brian. There's there's no need, but... Yeah, means a lot, thanks, means man. a lot. But, yeah. Brid, you've... you've... Yeah. So, so you've watched this channel a lot. So the, to it. these are kind of comfy things that I'll put on in the background. I say comfy. They do deal. <laughs> they do deal with. Morbidly. Yeah, it is quite morbid cases. I mean, like off the top of my head, some of the ones I remember is woman who is arrested for potentially killing people and feeding them to her pigs. A guy oh. who killed his parents and spent all his all their money 
on an OnlyFans uh, model in excess oh. of like two hundred thousand dollars. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Th- one. there was uh, sort of uh, a, a boy who killed his younger brother, but was sort of clearly had issues of his own. Like, there's there's a wide variety, but they are all quite. Think, they're quite dark. But I think true crime has really kicked off. Mm. Obviously, oh, yeah. a lot of it is centered around like the big serial killers and stuff. But this channel isn't to do with that. It's more to do with just general cases that happen like I, every day. Yeah, I the, quite the like... ones they pick are quite extraordinary. But yeah, I quite like it because it does the amount of true crime thing I've listened to, obviously, about the more famous ones, but we'll go through the case of, like, oh, this is their event, and it's like, and then the police showed up and they found some evidence, and now he's in jail. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and it's like, whoa, 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 there was a massive amount of, like, work there, like, how did they get caught? What was the, you know, police's proceedings with this? What happened well, afterwards? I think where it's, it's, a, it's like a mystery to it, and, like, like mm. any, like, like, um, detective novel or like you know like Poirot or or you know anything like I say Poirot or Sherlock Holmes you yeah. know there's a, the I'm mystery the element best. yeah you know I uh, think I I mean I was listening to one the other day on this channel right and it was essentially a um it was like a grandmother who had drowned her grandson in the tub oh. and the thing is, you hear and see these interviewers, and you basically get the entirety of the interview, bar a mm. few bits with sensitive information they, they have to cut. They are like three to four hours, some of these. And they're, they're a long list. When you go along them, you kind of come to your own conclusion. So I remember they showed the 911 call, and this lady was completely deadpan, like, oh, my grandson has drowned. And... Yeah. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, she starts, when she's pushed a bit, she starts crying, and you're like, hang on, that's suspicious. Hmm. Why you, as she suddenly had this massive personality switch? So it's good for that as well to come to your own conclusions. A yeah. lot of the cases they do as well, they've, I've noticed a few where they've done them, and the person's come out innocent in the end, but ah. there's a lot of like, question marks in the air type of situation yeah so it it's really fascinating but hmm. yeah that's that's my choice uh, yeah i don't know how like like i i i like some true crime but i like i couldn't like like do it all the time and it's like no, i'm not i'm not, not, not to dump in on your stuff or anything but i find like oh it must be exhausting to like listen to some of the well, stuff and be like damn like you know I, like i gotta take a breather from that it is it is a procedural thing as well like sort of it's i'd say 50 percent of it is psychology more than mm-hmm. i mean yeah it's macabre and stuff that sort of as tom was saying there'll be segments where it's like well Notice that when they're brought into the room, they're like stationary. But sort of yeah. when, when the murder like sort of like comes up as a topic, suddenly yeah. they're more animated, and then they're back. You know, it's yeah. That's where I, it's I a mean... slight issue with these kind of things, though, because it's very amateur psychology. It's very like, oh, well, everyone gets their two cents, and oh, you can infer from what they've said that maybe this person is 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 guilty. But hmm. at the end of the day, no matter how long the podcast is, you're getting a very small. Piece yeah, of what the the, the... I mean that's true, but there's a lot of things like it goes into, and it talks about, for example, the techniques the police use. The one they always yeah, seem to use is something called the Reed yeah. technique, where they build rapport yeah, in it, the first place. I and... think it's not necessarily the individual psychology; it's more interview psychology, if that makes mm. sense. So it's sort of more mm. like. This is how they got them to say the things, rather than you know. But I, yeah, I think they they do preface it all. They do preface it all at the start by saying like, "We've consulted wi- with psychologists, but like this isn't conclusive. This is their opinion on things they've noticed." You know. Mm. Uh, right on to the next topic, and that is the best music that we listened to in twenty twenty three. Now, I'm going to repeat myself here by saying uh, clearly this isn't 2023 exclusive because my pick 
is from I want to say 1976 or my, maybe oh. 1967. Now, a deep cut. so specific. This isn't specifically just the album, but this is what really got me to listen to more of them this year, and that is Boston's first album, Boston, because all all bands have had their first albums named after the band. Um, but yeah, Boston. I mean, y- you all. You've all heard more than a feeling. That's that's their classic. Yeah, kind of thing. good to know. Um, but you know, th- this year I've kind of, uh, as I do every every year, really. Sometimes I like I listen to a uh, a song I'm very familiar with, but I've never listened to the album and be like, mm. I'm, I'm gonna listen to the album. So I put on Boston's first album this year, and good lord, I. I'm not. I'm not going to say like, "Wow, this is a game changer. This is completely unlike anything." It is. It. It's very, very much classic rock. If you're not in classic rock, you're not going to enjoy Boston. But as a big fan of classic rock, there are some bangers on this album and the preceding two albums. I've mostly just listened to the first three this year. Kind of, I know they got you know a larger body of work than that, but their first three especially, I really got into. Um, the highlight, I would say, if I'd have to like point out one song, is "Long Time" um, slash uh, foreplay. That is, it's like a seven and a half minute like epic. Uh, it, uh, it, it's just they're, they're such a good band. I mean, they are you know very famous and stuff. They're not they're not a niche or a deep cut, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Are if, they if, actually from Boston? Uh, I I, I want to say they are. I think uh, it was because I know there's another band, Chicago, who are from Chicago, and I think I know at the time. Also, I'm not gonna lie. Like twenty percent of what inspired me to look at this album is the album art, which is like three UFOs and the main one destroying yeah. the Earth, and it's like God, that's so cool. Um, yeah, uh, you know, if if you're in the mood for dad rock. And you've not listened to Boston's body of work before. I think it's like it's it's just they got really solid uh, songs, especially their earlier stuff. Can't speak for after their third album, but I'm sure that's pretty good too. Uh, right on to Dan's pick. Dan. Okay, here we go. So my my pick is. Um... Alan Palomo and his album uh, World of Hassle. Now, Alan Palomo has been making music way back in 2009 um, called uh, Neon Indian. And I absolutely, well, like, when I was in uni, I would listen to his early stuff. And, well, well it wasn't even early stuff. It was at the time. It was, and it was. Um, you know, he had hits like Polish Girl, and I, when I th- hear that music, it's it takes me back to that time. And then in 2015, he released um, Vega International Night School, and it was like an 80s tinged kind of album, and it was weird, but it was really good. And that was that. I haven't heard anything from 2015, since 2015, until now. But this time, instead of being called uh, Neon Indian, he actually gave up that name and is, went by his actual name, Alan Palomo. And, uh, yeah, I think it's his best. It's just really fun. It's a really fun album. Um, so, you know, it's got, like... It's, like, electronic music, but it's, like, you know, it's got disco, it's got R&B, city pop, yeah, Italian disco, which is, like... Well, uh, it's a genre. It's, it's such a good genre. But yeah, it, yeah, I could talk about this um, literally uh, even an hour. But like, there are banner after banner after banner on this album, and it's like a um, clocking in around about like I'm gonna say nearly an hour of, of stuff. But it's it's really good, and um, the hi- hi- I, I've been listening to them constantly, and it, it's like. Um, a new worm, and um, I think one of the best songs, uh, "Stay at Home DJ," um, that that is a banner, and he even got. Um, um, it's interesting. So uh, he's he was born in Mex Mexico and then moved to the U.S. And the reason I say that is because they're actually got um, some songs are in Spanish, uh, some are in uh, one is in French. So it's a it's a multicultural album of sorts, and it's. Um, 
and it feels like a film listening to it it's and it's like if you like 80s kind of stuff it it's kind of 80s um vibes but it's like it's 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 modern as well so and um I can't get enough of it, and uh, I even I'm actually listening to it right now. <laughs> it just tells like it's and it's really funny as well, um, and and yeah, I, I I think it's really one of the best albums of this year for sure. And it's like uh, it's like really it's really chill and relaxing, but it's also like gets you pumped up, ready for the evening, and you feel confident listening to it as well. And um, yeah, can't get enough of it. Um, Nice. And uh, Mac DeMarco is on one of the tracks as well. Which, uh, oh, there you is, go. There we go. Yeah. Which one of the tracks? But uh, he, um, it's funny because um, I think because I did a deep dive on it. I was like, well, wh- why, why is Mac on this? And uh, and basically, uh, um, Alan Palomo was like, right, I really want this uh, keyboard. And uh, Mac tends to like collect a lot of like different kind of keyboards over the decade. And uh, he was like, hey. Oh, Dan, hello. Oh, apologies, viewer. I think and they went from there. Sorry, I think yeah, everybody uh, cut out there. I think Everett Discord out, yeah. yet again dropped. But yeah. Oh, wow. I heard he was like, "Hey," and then that was all right. Well, anyway, he was like, "Hey, j- let's let's make a track together," and uh, and they did. Nice. So, um, uh, yeah, oh. I I I recommend it. That sounds very multilingual, much like Tim's pick, sort of, I suppose, or at least. Part uh, of. not really. <laughs> it's 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 well, kind of, maybe a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. Um. My pick, again, um, similar um vibe has kind of two names because in Japan this uh, duo is known as Puffy. But then they made it big in America, and I don't know if any of you know, but there's already an artist who kind of goes by Puffy or went by Puffy <laughs> in the past. Oh my god, I didn't put two and two together there. Yeah, wow. yeah, I, I I went on a read on this. So um, so they were called Puffy, but they went to America, and obviously P Diddy for a while went by Puffy in America. So they were like, oh, we we, we can't really we can't really go by Puffy. Um, so they also go by the name Ami Yumi, which is the two members of this of this duo together and they're like a j-pop j-rock band who i'm surprised have gone i've kind of flown under my radar for so long as i am quite a big fan of of, of some j-pop rock um and yeah so i've discovered them this year i can't remember how i discovered them which is an interesting story even in and of itself because there's a song by them that was on my spotify liked songs and I was listening to it and I was like, this is a fucking banger. Like, uh, this is an absolute banger. And then I went on a deep dive looking into them. Yeah. And they're huge. Like, um, people have been talking about them in America for, for so in long. In fact, yes. the cover I have on the screen now is from their Cartoon Network show. Yes. They I was had going a whole to show. say, yeah, yeah. I, I remember watching that years ago. Mm. They had a Cartoon Network show. They made it huge, and they also did one of the openings for uh, Teen Titans. Which, yes, oh. yes. I just, uh, I'm, I was shocked when I listened to it, and I was like, I've, I've, I've not heard of them before. Um, but yeah, so I, I had this song in my like songs. I don't remember how it got there. Like, it's, it's a mystery to me, hmm. even now. And um, I kind of went on this deep dive and absolutely fell in love with them. So the song that was on there um, was called Asia No Junction, which is kind of um, known worldwide as kind of either Asia's innocence or through Asia, most people know as outside of um, Japan, all the way back from 1996. And it's an absolute banger. It instilled a sense of nostalgia in me, even though I'd never heard of the band before and have no idea what they're singing about because it's entirely in Japanese. But it had such a nostalgic feel to it that I... It, it, it spoke to me and I was like, oh, oh, absolute banger. So then I went and listened to that album, their first album, which, um, like we were saying earlier, it was called Amiyumi. So it was a uh, a self-titled uh, album and it was just an absolute pleasure to listen to. It's it's J-pop, so you, you know, you have the J-pop slash J-rock. It's a little bit of both, a kind of pop rock. Um, so it's got the kind of, 
easy to listen to. It's it's nothing too heavy, but it's also it's it's really good fake <laughs> rock, and it, it kind of it, it definitely had a kind of nineties vibe to it. So I resonated with it quite a lot because mm. I do like nineties music a lot, and it just it, it really like um had a kind of a nice feeling to it. It had a nostalgic feeling to it that kind of brought me back to the nineties, even though obviously I never listened to them in the nineties. So it was it was it was a pleasure. Um, obviously I got into them through Spotify through that story. So and a lot of the entire album is in Japanese, so I don't know what a lot of the songs are called, but ah. True Asia is definitely my favourite song. I also, one of the songs on that 96 album is something to do with a mountain. I think it's called like Yes Mountain with exclamation marks. And that's, again, another banger from that album. Um, so that album has been the one that I've been listening to on repeat. So that album I'm absolutely obsessed with, and I've been slowly branching out into their other more recent music as well. I think they're still going. They've been going for a very oh, long wow. time. So fair play to them. They have been making a lot of music. Um, but yeah, currently I'm making my way through them. Nice. And I've started from 96 from the beginning. I think I, I'm kind of predicting myself here, but I think I'm going to vibe more with the 96 music than I oh, will wow. with the more recent music because that's mm. very much me as a person. I want to say their last release was in 2021. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so very yeah very not, not very long ago at all. But um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Very much enjoying them. Um, very surprised they've flown under my own radar for so long because I know they've, they, they're quite a popular, one of the more popular J-rock bands that have made it worldwide, I think. But yeah, very, very glad to have come across them this year, even though I have no idea how. Nice. Nice. Uh, right, and we're going to end on Tom's nomination. Tom, what is the music or soundtrack you've enjoyed the most this year? So, believe it or not, the soundtrack, uh, this uh, this soundtrack is from the game that almost got my number one this year. So, my pick is the soundtrack from Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Oh, so, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk um was a game heavily inspired by Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future. Um and it was released by Team Reptile this year. So essentially because it's inspired by those games, they wanted a soundtrack to match. It needed something that really brought about something Hideki ish. Something a bit Hideki ish, yes. And they got him. They, they got hey. Hideki Nagnuma to do a few tracks on there. So I'll talk about him first, actually, um, because in all honesty, his stack, uh, tracks are probably some of the standouts on there. He did a song called The People on there, and yet again, he's gone and sampled a civil rights speech. Um <laughs> like he likes doing. But not only that, he sampled exactly the same speech as he did in Concept of Love. <laughs> so he sampled some other lines from that speech for the people. Oh. And his contributions to the soundtrack are great. Um, I'm so glad that he agreed to it. Um, the game's obviously a love letter um, to the uh, mm. to the Jet Set Radio and also to its soundtrack. There were some other greats on there as well. I really like Condensed Milk, which was like a kind of soft Japanese song uh, mm. that I really liked. Um, this there was someone on there called Too Mellow as well. Who oh was yeah, inspired. I've listened to some Too Mellow. Is he's a very Naganuma inspired artist? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think. Um, I don't think he was on the original uh, Jet Set Radio. No, no, no. He, uh, I think, but he... he did release something that was ah. his pen sequel oh. to like the soundtrack. Oh yes, so yeah, no, I've, yeah, I think I've listened to that. They one. obviously picked him up for this game, and he put some bangers in there as well. So there's a very varied soundtrack. There's actually thirty-two tracks on it, I think, hmm. um, and. It's great. It's great to have your inline skates or skateboard or BMX and 
just be jamming to this music, you know, uh, putting graffiti on. And I found myself, like, just listening to it a lot off game, mm. as I do with the Jet Set Radio soundtracks. Um, very funky, but there is a mix of genres as well. And just as a kind of side note, I'm so glad that Sega has finally taken notice how mm. much their series was beloved. And they're actually making another one. Whether oh, it's a remake yeah. or what, we don't know. But I hope in this new one we have another banger soundtrack as well. And honestly, more of this, please. More of this. Even if a new Bomb Rush Cyberfunk comes out, because they, it was one of the best games this year, in my opinion. And the soundtrack... Without the soundtrack, I don't think it would be the game it was. Uh, it's integral to the experience. Nice. Well, that wraps up part two of our 2023 wrap-up. <laughs> I hope you've all enjoyed, and if you haven't, let me know by posting as many expletives as you can in the comments below. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for joining me for this, and if you want to hear the conclusion to the 2023 wrap-up, then stick around for tomorrow unless you're listening to this after i've uploaded all the parts in which case you can just marathon them um yeah we will be discussing in the last part what we enjoyed most about this year in event terms and what we're looking forward to next year so stay tuned for that unless that doesn't sound like your thing which fair enough uh, I no you have to stay tuned anyway no it's all right look eat and you don't need to subscribe or anything. You can just... I, I appreciate... Subscribe it. now. Only I, 70% of people who watch this video are actually subscribed that, to that's, him that's, in, that's entirely too high. I think <laughs> if this video gets 10 views, I don't think 10% of the viewers watching this are going to be subscribed. <laughs> um, but thank you anyway. I We will see you guys for part three. So see you then.